Hey guys, today we're gonna to talk through Facebook's new custom audience pixel and uh, how it works and some of the benefits and then we'll do a little demonstration of how you can test it on your site uh, just to see how the, the, cust the data flows through and all that good stuff. So uh, if you haven't seen it yet, if you use Facebook Business Manager or you run Facebook ads, you've probably seen that Facebook's updated their way that they're tracking uh, custom audiences. So they've released this new pixel that is uh, way more simple and, and way more like a way more unified approach to tracking your audiences and your conversion events. So now instead of having, you know, if, if you've advertised on Facebook in the past, you probably remember having like 8,000 different conversion pixels, all with different IDs and having to keep track of which ones go on, which thank you pages and which purchase pages and all that good stuff. So with this one, you have way more flexibility and uh, we'll, we'll show an example here in just a second, but uh, the long and short of it is you're going to get a, a base tracking tag that looks like this. So this is a, a script tag that you would place on all pages of your site. So if you're using Google Tag Manager, you want to put this to fire on all pages. Uh, if you're using, if you're doing this straight in your website source, you know, a lot of CMS or uh, themes have a, like a universal container where you can put analytics code. Uh, you know, you want to drop this kind of main uh, pixel code in there. Just be sure to get the one from your back end. They'll give you your exact version of this because you'll have to replace this FB pixel ID uh, here and here with your actual ID number. Uh, so in your in your ad back end, you should be able to get the actual pixel code. Um, but I'll do a another you know, more full length video and post on how to implement this in full detail and how to set up all your custom events through GTM because that's kind of a longer topic but today we're just going to go through how this works and uh, just give you a little bit of background on the pixel itself so this stems from a question um, on john loomer's blog so uh someone asked about uh, ivo asked uh you know about how the code snippet works in terms of when you fire your event after you def you've already placed this uh base uh, the base script on the page. Now I want to fire an event like a checkout, uh, you know, or a, a, a lead or a purchase or whatnot. Uh, so this is a good question. So he's, at the end of the day, he's kind of asking like, how, do, how does this tie back to the base code? So how does this by itself know to send data to Facebook? So we're going to walk through that. So what I've done is um, I've taken the, the, the base code from uh, Facebook and I've just pasted it into the unminify.com so it cleans it up a little bit Now I'm not going to get too in the weeds about how all of this works but at the end of the day what what this code snippet does is it creates this FBQ function uh, and makes it available in your window object which is basically like your, your browser window uh, object where uh, all of your JavaScript interactions kind of take place so if you're wondering why you can just do a, an FBQ call like this later in the page is that fbq is defined in the win is a variable this is a function that's defined in the window scope so when you call to it it knows that that's going to send data to to facebook uh, so that's the long and short of it um, you know you could get into the nitty-gritty about uh, how these all these parameters work how it's placed in the page but it's really kind of like um, it doesn't really matter that much how all that works it's a pretty typical kind of implementation uh, that that a lot of tracking and advertising technologies use. But let's go for, to an example now so you can see this in action. And I'll show you a cool little trick to uh, verify. So in my website, I'm at funnelboom.com. If I go to my pixel helper, uh, you'll see that I have a couple uh, pixels. I, I actually do page view tracking and view content tracking. So I'm tracking a custom event based on some uh, uh, some some information in my data layer, but I won't get into that for now. So what you want to do is if you have the base pixel installed on one page of your site or on many pages of your site, if you want to kind of test this out is go to your page, right? If you're in Chrome, uh, you know, I'm using Chrome, but you can use almost any browser to do this, although the instructions will be slightly different. Uh, do right click inspect element. So this will bring up this uh, developer tools window. And what we're going to want to do here is you know, as I said, the, the base code creates this object that makes it available at the window scope. So if I come to my console down here, so you can do this. Uh, some of you might not have a console that pops up at the bottom. You know, this is your, your JavaScript console for your browser. So if you don't see this console window, just come over to a console up here. It's the same thing. 
Uh, but if you start to type FBQ, look, you'll see that it's available there in the drop down. That's because it's already been defined in the page. So I can do FBQ and just see what is FBQ. Okay, so it's a function. All right, so it's already been defined in the page scope. So this is why in the page we don't have to define um, a full code or a full the full base pixel reference again when we want to define an event. So what we're going to do just to test this out is, well, since FBQ is available and it's already been defined, I'll just send a test event from my console. So I'm going to do FBQ track custom, which means uh, this is not a standard event. You know, Facebook provides, if you look at their documentation, they've got nine standard events. So we got view content, search, add to cart, uh, blah, blah, blah. And you can read through these and see their required parameters and so forth. Uh, but additionally, you can also do uh, like this example, track custom, where you can pass in any kind of event and any parameters about that event. Now you can only use it for audience building right now. You can't do uh, conversion tracking based on these events uh, or optimize uh, bids uh, based on these events. So you'd only want to use these for the case where you want to use a, uh, uh, you just purely want to use it for, for building your audience. Um, and again, I'll, I'll do a more detailed post with some examples of how you could use this. But um, you know, if you want to be able to, con to track conversions on the event and you want to be able to optimize to it, uh, just try to make one of these standard events work. You know, they'll apply for pretty much every situation. Uh, but going back to our example, so let's go back to our console window here. Uh, I've got FBQ track custom. I'm going to do console log. So this is just a made up event. And I'll pass in a made up parameter called message. Um, hello world. and close that up and we'll send that. So then now if I come into my Facebook uh, business manager in my audience background or my audience manager, I guess it's called pixel manager now, the default tab is this URLs tab. But if I come over to events, you'll see there it is. Uh, I got a console log event. So I've actually sent data from the console to Facebook. And uh, the other cool thing that you can do with this is since I've just sent that data, basically, you know, it initiates a request out to Facebook. I can go to my network tab and I can inspect that request. So I'm in network and I've just clicked, you can click this filter icon, type in Facebook. All right, guys, sorry about that. I had to edit out some of it because I really didn't want to, it was getting too tough to edit out my, my, uh, pixel ID, but when you click into this request on the left, uh, it'll give you this little preview window on the right where you can see the data <clears throat> it's being sent to Facebook. So for that console log that we just did, we can see the request with the data going out to Facebook. And I've scrolled down here in this little window to this section called query string parameters. So here you see, uh, you know, my ID, which I've obviously blurred out and then the event, which is console log, which is what I decided I wanted to call my custom event. Um, then this message, hello world, uh, and then just some other kind of random uh, stuff that I'm sending to them that's generated by default. So uh, hopefully that helps a little bit with understanding how at that FBQ function works. You know, that really you could call it from anywhere in the page as long as the base code has, has been set up. Uh, already in the page source or has already been fired on the page. So yeah, look for the uh, upcoming more detailed post on how to implement this through GTM, how to kind of figure out what custom events you want to set up right up front, and then how to get those working. So thanks for uh, checking it out and uh, we'll see you guys soon.